the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death, but Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, how you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, the innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he, said, he answered, Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree you surprised them together? Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two, 
so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion, that he may live. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on do not sin any more. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We should pour forth prayers at all times, dear brothers and sisters, but above all in these days of Lent. We ought to watch more intently with Christ and direct our petitions more fervently to God. For the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time, they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that in lasting tranquility and peace, our days may truly become the acceptable time of grace and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For sinners and the neglectful, that in this time of reconciliation they may return to Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that God may at last stir up in our hearts aversion for our sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, especially those who are sick with COVID-19 in our world, in our country, and in our community, that they may be healed of their sickness uh, and, and brought home to their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those on the front line of fighting this disease, especially our health care workers, that they may be protected, that they may be given the resources that they need, that they may be strengthened, uh, and that they may know of your love and your resolve, Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, uh, especially Raymond Elko, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may be forgiven their sins and brought into the fullness and the light of the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may turn to you with all their heart, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting prayer, they may receive by your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao, Pleni Suceli et Terra, Gloria Tuam, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, 
Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Twenty-Third, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Raymond, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, 
that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, now and always. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.